How's everybody doing today? Yeah, how are you? Great to have you here. We got a nice, uh, nice hot day out there. Got a lot of good work in today. Get some red zone in. Get some two minute. Uh, mix in some third down, so the guys are fired up. What uh, what questions do you have for me? Uh, Scott Fitter had said publicly that you, know, you were a big reason why Matt Corral, um, you all drafted him. What did you? What in particular did you like about him in the pre-draft process, or what you may have seen before? Yeah, you know, Matt. The more we uh, more we got to know him, the more we liked him. You know, he liked his film. Obviously, he was productive, right? Uh, productive player, threw for you know a bunch of yards. He ran for a bunch of yards. So, you know, physical guy. You know, despite being you know not maybe the biggest guy in the draft, but uh, you know he willed uh, Mrs. Ole Miss to a bunch of wins. You know, they won ten games, I believe, and uh, you know in a place that doesn't usually win ten games a year, his winning percentage was. You know, just a little bit under what Eli's was there uh, in his starts. Uh, you know, I really like his skill set as far as the way he gets the ball out of his hand quickly. Uh, you can see it translating uh, into this league possibly uh, as we move forward. Uh, but he's got a lot of work to do. We like him on draft day. Draft's over. So now we're, you know, we're working, uh, working right now, getting them ready to, uh, to go with what we're doing. What in particular are the, are the biggest things you want uh, to see him improve as we get closer to training? You know, this uh, it's a different game up here. Um, you know, that's not taking anything away uh, from, from college football. I think they did a great job with him. Uh, you know, he had good footwork training there. Uh, the offense was vast. You know, you could see, uh, you know, some pro concepts mixed in there along with some, with some college stuff and so a lot of spread stuff. I think uh, it was a really good offense, so it got him ready. You know, he knows where uh, he, he needs to go with the ball when it's snapped. But the biggest thing, really, when you get these guys up here, it's from, you know, the time the whistle blows till uh, the ball snapped on the next play is where he needs to spend his most time right now. Uh, you know, just uh, handling that part of the game. Communication's a big part of it. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, they come in and, and you know, they're, they're fired up. They're with their teammates when they get on the field. And then... Uh, you know, all of a sudden they looked at the sideline, someone signals the play, they clap their hands and they get the ball in their hands. And in this league, it's a little bit different with the with the microphones and with the, you know, the headsets. Um, so we just need to work on that communication. And really, it's like he's trying to learn a different language and he hasn't spoke before. That's really what it is because he hadn't had to communicate that way in the past. So now he's learning the way we do things. Uh, we have a lot in the offense and there's verbal and visual cues that he has to know and has to learn. It's uh, it's just going to take some time. Eric Smart really got kind of struggled getting the mix last year. What did you see from his tape, and then what have you seen so far this year that can maybe help him get more involved in the offense? Yeah, there was uh, you know using going through his tape last year, there was some flashes uh, of good football, and we've certainly seen that so far. Uh, he's a young guy; he seems to have a chip on his shoulder. Uh, he's out there; he's uh, you know learning what we're trying to get done from an offensive perspective. And uh, I see a guy that can play inside. He can play outside. And, um, you know, I like what I see. I like the look in his eye. And with Rashard Higgins, what does he bring to the table? Just does it help maybe push Terrace to be that number three guy? Yeah, you know, right now we're not looking really at roles for guys. It's, it's a lot of really TLC, right, uh, teaching, learning, and communication going on. So we're just trying to learn about each other a little bit, learn the offense, put it in, uh, kind of see what guys do well um, and how they fit together. Uh, but they'll all work together in that room. They'll all eventually push each other when it comes that time to fight for a job. But right now, it's just you know teaching, learning, and communication. Man, all things being equal, are you a guy that would rather have a rookie quarterback sit for a year? And what would sort of show you when a guy's ready to get in there? Yeah, I think you know to me, every guy's different and every team's different. Uh, and I think you take it on a case by case basis. Um, so right now we'll just uh, you know we'll just let things uh, play out. We'll go out there, teach. We'll learn. We'll communicate, and uh, you know we'll see how the chips fall. What about the second part of that question, though? What are you kind of looking for to say, okay, I, I think he's he's close here. He's ready. Yeah, I think you know obviously you got to get into training camp. You got to start competing. You know right now it's more, you know that's really not a big thought process the way the CBA set up, right? So. Uh, right now is more you know about learning and then training camp you start to compete for roles and that's kind of when it starts so it's really early right now to even say uh, what he needs to do but we need to get to training camp first and obviously preseason will will play a part of it but it's not going to be easy for him it's going to be a challenge and you know I'm not here to make it easy for him I'm here to make it hard on him so when he does have a chance to play and get in the games he's ready to go 
piggyback on what Joe said, what are some of the areas specifically that you would like to see Sam Darnold improving to give you confidence going into the season with him as your starter? Yeah, I think uh, Sam just needs to do what he's doing right now, and that's attack every day the way he's attacking every day. He's putting a lot of time in preparation-wise. Uh, we're asking him to do you know, a, lot of, a lot of different things maybe than what he's done in the past, and that's just take it in stride. Right now, don't be afraid to try new things. Practice deliberately. Practice deeply. And then when, when we get to, uh, to game time, when it's time to play games, we'll figure out what's the best uh, direction to go for, for our offense and for Sam. Uh, but right now, just keep an open mind. Uh, keep, uh, you know, keep working on the little things, the details. You know, a lot of the plays out of the concepts you can find everywhere in the league. Uh, but we may ask you to look at them a little bit differently here, uh, based on a variety of different things. And uh, right now, we just hey, we need to keep on keeping on and attack every day and try to get a little bit better each and every day, whether it's with the feet, uh, whether it's moving through progressions, and. Uh, you know, those types of things, just fundamentals that, that every every quarterback works on. It's just at this point in time, everything's kind of new for him on the way on what we're asking him to do. But uh, he's uh, he, he's hitting it head on. You know, I, I know Matt Crog isn't quite ready to be a day one starter. Um, I know you, you, Matt Rule, and, you know, you accidentally, of course, but Matt Rule said that if today were, if the season were to start today, Sam Darnold would be the starter. But would you all, do you all feel comfortable right now, or do you all feel like you, you still have to get to a certain point with Sam Darnold? To yeah, I mean, no, nobody should be comfortable on offense right now. We're putting in a new offense. We're asking a lot of these guys. We're challenging them each and every day, players and coaches. So right now we just need to go out. We need to learn, and we need to push. Uh, so, you know, in my, in my mind, no one's uh, – you know, nobody's out there ready to fight for a job, fight for a role. If we were to go out there to play, we'd play with Sam, and I'd shoot, I'm, I'd be fired up and ready to go play with him. And in terms of the, kind of the order of operations of how you teach this thing, do they see everything once or all the first down, then all the third down, all the red zone, that kind of thing? Just how do you install a new offense and how do you throw it out? Yeah, we uh, break it down a few different ways. That's a good question. Uh, you know, we'll go through. We'll teach. Uh, we'll teach the the run action, um, the movement game, uh, you know, and the play action stuff with the runs. So you know, we'll do a, an outside zone day. We'll do an inside zone day. We'll do a gap day, and we'll do a turn day, and we'll marry them up. Uh, you know, the passes up with uh, with the runs, and then we'll kind of repeat that. So that's about eight days right there. And itself, and then we have a you know a couple days. We'll take uh, we'll split up the red area. We'll split up third down and two minute, and you know we'll split those up a couple different ways. So we have you know ballpark you know maybe twelve days of uh, of installation you know here or there. So we like to go out do a little bit of teaching every day, do some reviewing um, as we go, and then we just kind of keep on loading their plate, loading their plate, loading their plate, and and see if we can keep building on. Um, you know, things we install, you know, for example, we'll install two by two, all go one day, and then the next day we'll install another version of it and then just keep tweaking it and adding to it as we go throughout the installs and see what uh, see what guys look good doing, see what the quarterback likes, see what he can handle, you know, because it's, you know, communication in this thing is a two-way street. It's all, you know, not just me standing up there beating my fist on a table and, and those kinds of things. I want to get feedback from the players. And I want to see them do a variety of things, see them do things that they maybe haven't done on tape uh, in the past and see, you know, see how that looks, see their comfort level doing it, see if, you know, we can, uh, we can push them to do something, add a little extra tool in their toolbox that we can carry forward. So there's a lot we're looking at right now, but the biggest thing I don't want to do is rush to rush the judgment over what our offense is going to look like. Uh, you know, the offense that we're going to put out there is going to look far different probably than any offense that you've seen me involved with in the past. That's just because our players are different. That doesn't mean we have a bunch of new plays that we didn't have in the past. We're just going to try to do our best job to tailor it to the, the players we have. <clears throat> you will have shown them everything once, basically, by the end of OTAs. Yeah, they got the they got the uh, meat and potatoes in phase one. They got all the installs in phase two, and now we're working through it again. And by the time training camp's over, we'll be probably three and a half times through it. How no would you describe how your approach to this offense will be different? Oh, it's just going to be comprehensive. You know, I like plays. I like to have a lot of goodies in there. I like to have a lot of toys. But, you know, it's just it's based on the players and how we how they look. We're going to go out there. We're going to practice. 
you know, what runs do we want to hang on or hat on? What are going to be our change up runs? Again, I really don't care what the plays are. I just care, you know, care about how they fit together. You know, good football fits together like nuts and bolts. It's got to fit together tight. The fundamentals got to be tight. The system's loose, you know. Uh, the system can we can run it a variety of different ways at a variety of different tempos. So to me, it's just it's about the players and uh, what the players can do and figuring out which is the hard part what they do best all together collectively. How's this for you, Ben? I mean, back kind of calling plays, not yet, but installing offense. And when you were with the Cowboys, I mean, did you kind of ever, as you were watching tape, say? This is probably what I would have done in this series or against this defense. I mean, were you sort of running through any of those scenarios? Yeah, uh, you know, this is this is a pretty good gig. It beats working. You know, I really I love what I'm doing. I'm doing right now. Work with a great locker room of players, coaches. Uh, that was part of my you know job last year with Dallas was uh, to go through work on both sides of the ball. So look at it for Dan Quinn, and you know if I was the offense, this is how I would attack you if I had their personnel. Uh, and same thing for Kellen. You know, I'd, I'd come out with a novel of plays I liked each week based on the defense we were seeing. I probably wore them out a little bit, but uh, you know, Kellen's a great guy, and uh, you know, I enjoyed our work, our relationship there. And uh, so I've always, uh, I love this part of the game. I love diving into the football and uh, diving into the fundamentals, and uh, just working with players and, and teaching and uh, seeing how they can improve. You know, not only technically but tactically. Was there a part of the pre-draft process where you that kind of stood out to you about Hickey, whether it was a tape or just meeting him or just anything as you got to know him? Yeah, I think uh, there was a play where I was just watching film and I was back. Uh, I was back home uh, and I was watching it with my son and just they pitched the ball to the edge and just saw him get out of his stance and the and the and the foot speed was really impressive to see something you don't see a lot of and. Uh, then you get a chance to meet him, and you and you feel really good about the person, and uh, you know, uh, you know, obviously he has a long way to go, and he has a lot, lot to learn, uh, and he's still a young guy. You know, they're still trying to figure out, you know, if it's pumped or stuffed at this point, uh, but you you certainly like his skill set, and you certainly like the person, and uh, we look forward to playing with him. Uh, you know, the short shelf life on running backs. Now, how do you balance using, utilizing somebody like Christian McCaffrey? Without overusing Yeah, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, Coach and I will have conversations on moving forward. But right now it's, you know, Christian's still out there. He's trying to learn the offense. It's new. There's a lot of different things and protections, um, you know, for him. There's a lot of different actions in there. The runs are a little bit different maybe than he's used to running them. So right now we're just diving in, trying to learn this thing, teach and learn it together, uh, making sure we're good at the communication. And, uh, you know, we'll worry about that when it comes time to, uh, to play games. Is there a way to do it? Um, I mean, you saw a lot of injuries around the league last year, uh, two running backs. You know, is there a way to to get the most out of running backs and and still uh, you know preserve their the health? Or is it just yeah, there's always a way to to manage a load. But these guys play football for a living, right? Injuries are a part of the game. Uh, but there's always a way to manage reps and manage manage a load that way. Sure. The last couple of years, the, the Panthers really haven't had much production out of the tight end room, whether it be Thomas or Trimble, in terms of the passing game. So what do you need to do to get them more involved? And I know they tried to do some different stuff with Tommy Trimble. So is he kind yeah. of like a versatile piece that you guys can just move around and toy with? Yeah, in a previous life, I was a uh, I used to coach the tight ends, man. So I, I know this. We, uh, we have a really good room. Uh, I like those guys. You know, from top to bottom, I think it's one of the strengths we have on offense. Uh, there, there are guys who uh, they can block. Uh, they can play a little bit of the fullback position. You can put them in space. So the skill set's really good. Uh, you have a lot of guys in a room that can do more than one thing, which I think is a key to that position. You just can't be, you know, a guy that can just be an inline blocker or a guy that can just be a displaced player. Uh, I think all those guys have multiple things that they can do to help you, and they have some value on special teams, which will go a long way for them and for us. All right, thanks, coach. All right, appreciate it. Thank you.